really empower us as a people. And it is today, uh, beloved, the 7th of October 2021. And uh, I'm broadcasting from Bold Moves Radio in Polokwani, South Africa, Lipompo. And thank you so, so very much for being with us. I welcome you all, our friends on Facebook, on Strike Mangani page, and those of you who are listening on radio, Bold Moves Radio, and all of you who are joining us also on uh, Bold, Bold Moves Radio YouTube. And of course, family, I am excited tonight because we are going to have a wonderful time with a beautiful panel that is before us. And we're talking tonight on uh, a very important topic that uh, we all need to know and also to uh, be inclined when it comes to this topic. And um, beloved, we're talking about demisifying albinism. But uh, I must be honest, uh, there are myths associated with albinism in South Africa and have a profound influence on the lives of people with, with a condition from the moment of their birth up to their death. The beliefs and superstitions surrounding the condition affects families' lives and interfere with access to education, employment, even marriage. The team, uh, the, or the term itself, albinism, refers to a group of related inherent uh, inherited conditions which are the result of uh, mutilate, muta mutated genes that cause deficiency in melanin production. But uh, today or this evening, family, I'm not even going to try and explain anything here because I have in my panel uh, very important people that are going to be helping us through the topic. And uh, we have with us Mr. Bruce Nyoni. He is the executive director for Albino Trust in Zimbabwe. And we have Ms. Rilebohile Lifojane, SADC Deputy Head of Third Technical Committee. We have also Ms. Chikondi Kajanza. And then she's Miss Albinism Malawi 2019. We have Mr. Tafadzwa Kanema. He said, say of reporter. And of course, we've got also Mr. Aldridge Munyoro. He's a lecturer and a PhD candidate with Vets University. And of course, we have with us Mr. Uh, T.C. Mabunda. Mr. T.C. Mabunda is the host of the Vibrant Corner on Bold Moves Radio. And we've got also Mr. Desmond Mungwai, who is a technical producer. And we've got also Mr. Believe in Tool. This is a technical team that brings this show to us. I would love to say tonight, my name is Strike Manganye, and I would love to say to all my panelists, good evening to you and welcome to the Vibrant Corner. And of course, you are free. You are free to 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 to, to you know to unmute and talk. You are free. This is your platform, ladies and gentlemen. You are free. Uh, I think uh, 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 Mr. Bruce uh, Nyoni uh, might lead us more, but we are free to talk. May I hear you? Um, in the program and if you don't mind let me start with mr bruce yoni and just say hi and tell us a little bit about oh, your role you. sir all right thank you so much uh it is my pleasure to be part and part of, of this program especially tonight a program that is not just like any other program but a program that is meant to increase appreciation of diversity for sustainable development guided by the living no one behind the principle. Bruce Nyon is my name and I'm the executive director of Albino Trust of Zimbabwe. Good evening, not only Zimbabwe and South Africa, but SADAC or Africa. Uh, thank you so much. Over to you, Mr. Facilitator. Thank you so very much, Mr. Nyoni, and um, we really appreciate you are welcome. Mr. Lebohile uh, Lifojane, good evening to you, ma'am, and welcome. Good evening, Africa. Good evening, Sadek. I am Ms. Lelobilele Fajani. Uh, as I have already been um, told, as you've already been told, and I'm really excited to be here 
because knowledge is light. It takes knowledge to change a whole lot of things that are going wrong. So I'm ready uh, for tonight's session. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much, ma'am. A blessed evening to us all. And then Chikondi Kajansa. Good evening, my sister, and welcome. Um, good evening. Uh, as you already said, my name is Chikondi Kajansa. I am the current Miss Albanese in Malawi, uh, crowned in 2019. And also, I am a member of the Association of Persons with Albanese in Malawi. And I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Mr. Tafazwa uh, Ganema. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you, Pastor Strive? And good evening, the rest of Africa and Sadak. My name is Tafazwa Kanema from Zimbabwe, and I'm the Sadak Disability Committee Rapporteur. And I'm happy to be with you tonight as we are hosted in this, um, you know, a wonderful platform. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much and welcome, sir. And uh, Mr. Aldridge uh, Munyoro, welcome and good evening, sir. Uh, good evening, Africa. Good evening, Sadiq. Uh, so as I have been earlier introduced, my name is Aldridge Munyoro. I'm a researcher uh, and a PhD candidate at the University of the Witwatersrand in Johannesburg. I'm also a fellow for the Atlantic Fellowship for Health EPT in South Africa. And I've worked in the field of albinism for over eight years now. I'm great to be here. I hope this is going to be a very informative and, and a very intriguing uh, platform to discuss issues related to albinism. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome. And thank you so very much for also introducing yourself. And I would love to say to all our friends on Facebook and our friends on Bold Moves Radio, on even on Bold Moves uh, YouTube, you are welcome. And thank you so very much for tuning in. We are in a wonderful show. It's called The Vibrant Corner. But today we're talking about demystifying uh, myths around albinism. And we have a wonderful panel with us, even as they introduce themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just pose this simple question in a layman's language. When we talk about uh, albinism, how do we explain it? You know, uh, there are in every field there are terms that surround that particular field, and even as a religious person or as a pastor, you know, uh, there are uh, religious terminologies that uh, sometimes if I just jump on people and and uh, come with those jargons, I might be speaking Greek. But in layman's language, how do we explain albinism? Uh, thank you very much. I'll take that one. <laughs> In simple terms, albinism is a genetic disorder which occurs when um, a mutated gene passes on uh, from parents. It can be parents who have albinism or parents who do not have albinism, and then they are passed on to a child. So this genetic transference, it causes um, the melanin production to be reduced or to, 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 to not be present at all. And when there is a little melanin uh, or there is no melanin at all, then the hair, the eyes and the skin color is affected. So in, a, in simple terms, that's what albinism is. Thank you. Thanks so very much, ma'am. We really appreciate it. I think that comes clear to every person uh, listening and watching this show. But as far as uh, demographics are concerned, it seems albinism is commonly around or found in Africa. Is albinism only in the black population or does it cut, cut across different races? Um, I'll take that one. Uh, Albinism is not only um, a condition that's there in African countries only, but it's it's it happens everywhere since it's it's a genetic condition. So people have genes, and when I say people, I mean all races of people. So mm. albinism can also be um, present in people from Europe, people from America, and not just human beings. Albinism is also um, can also be present in animals that are not human beings. So it's not just about 
um, the black population, but it, it can also be present in any other kind of race. Oh, yes. No, thank you so very much. Really appreciate it. I just want to check if this, uh, because I would love also our uh, participants and our guests on different platforms to also communicate to us so that they also uh, take advantage of this platform and ask whatever they would love to ask so that we get clarity tonight. And I thank you, uh, family. I see you on Facebook. Thank you so, so very much. We're still on the Vibrant Corner. My name is Strike Manganyi, and I'm hosting this show tonight. Uh, and uh, the resident host, of course, is none other but TC Mabunda. But tonight, I am sitting on the driver's seat. L l let's look at, you know, you know, uh, Africa is Africa. And this one, I'm just throwing it. Um, like as Chikondi, uh, you have said, my dear sister, that look, it is not only in Africa and it is not only in persons, but it happens across because of exactly its uh, scientific explanation. But when we look at the myths around it, is it true or is it so in different uh, races like it is with our Africans or our African population? Okay, uh, thank you so much. Uh, let me probably try by all means to 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 to, to draw you back a bit before I would allow uh, Dr. Mioro to actually take it over. I wanted yeah. to give uh, uh, some addition with regards to uh, the definition. You know, right. the, the definition which is scientific talks of genetic disorders. So mm. when you just mentioned the term disorder. It's unfortunate that I cannot write, rewrite the dictionary in <laughs> order to, to actually clarify. Because mm. some of these issues, they are issues to do with semantics. So when mm. we are simply saying it's disorder, that's why we see the high levels of stigma and discrimination actually mm. prevailing. Mm. So um, that one is a scientific definition. Mm. And it is mostly understood by scientists. But I would mm. like to put it in an African context. Like what my sister Chikondi said, it's not an issue of Africa alone. It's mm. an issue of the world. Mm. And globally, there are people with albinism. And now in the African context, before I mention of the African context, it's important for us to mention that there are over 13 uh, types of albinism uh, okay. that do exist in the world. So mm. the one which is common, probably albinism becomes more, com it appears as if it's more common here in Africa because uh, of the skin color because in, 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 white, in the white population would hardly view or see it. So mm. yeah, it becomes more visible to the extent that a layman might think probably that albinism is an African issue instead of oh, yeah. taking it as a continental issue. So mm. there, I think I've tried by only to touch some few issues. Then mm. over the issue of a layman's definition, which can be understood by somebody who is at first and something that somebody who can understand from Zahi, somebody who can understand, uh, even from Lesotho. What we are simply saying, we have our brothers who looks white, yet they are black. And mm -hmm. these people, what makes them to be different from us is that they do not have more melanin than what mm -hmm. we do have. And this melanin makes them vulnerable to uh, the sun, which is in which Africa have got a high temperature. And mm -hmm. as such, they are vulnerable to skin cancer to the extent that they are not in a position to do a uh, hard job like what others can do. For instance, I can say heading the kettle because of the sun, and this makes them vulnerable to skin cancer. Mm -hmm. And these are the people we need to protect than to abuse. Then we mm -hmm. go to the next point, which I would want to talk about, especially on global level, on why is it that there is high levels of discrimination and stigma in the African context than any other countries. Like there has been appreciation of diversity uh, in all these other countries uh, in the development, in the developing world, to the extent that albinism is part of the human race. There's nothing superstitious, there's nothing unique, there is nothing uh, luckish, or there's nothing charmish about persons with albinism. They are just mm. people like any other persons, to the extent that they are 
treated them, they've treated them as their brothers and sisters whom they should live together with them in peace and in harmony than people whom they should hunt body parts and kill them like what is happening in some sections of Africa. Let me give it to others. Wow. Uh, uh, Mr. Nyone, I really, uh, I really appreciate that uh, broad explanation, and I would love to say to the panel: Look, I'm sitting on the driver's seat, but honestly, you conduct this whole vehicle, and uh, the more we get to understand, I think the better. I sit here; I have to understand. I have to be well equipped, and uh, like we all, you know, it's it's uh, people. Um, uh, um, uh, with disabilities, they will say nothing about us without us. And I think that is very true because sometimes we try and advocate or, uh, and, and, and champion uh, programs that we do not even have an idea. Anybody within the panel would love to expantiate even as Mr. Bruce Nyoni has given us this clarity because uh, honestly, we, we, I always thought it's prevalent only in Africa, you know, but uh, this information brings a great light to us all to really understand that uh, it's nothing about uh, what sometimes as Africans we we, we attach to. Any um, in the panel would love to really come in and give us even more. Okay, uh, maybe I can also join in. Thank you. Um, yeah, so just to add to what my brother Bruce has also said, uh, albinism really is prevalent everywhere in the world. Mm. And uh, what is actually striking from the research that I've done, uh, you find that even issues of stigma, they even still happen currently, even in those countries that you would call developed, but they are not more pronounced as what is happening here in Africa. Mm. Um, you find that people with albinism in countries like Britain, in countries like France, they also still face a lot of uh, discrimination, but it's not uh, necessarily uh, more pronounced as what we have here in Africa. I think uh, what we have here in Africa is also related to a lot of factors. Mm. Uh, if you look at um, the issue of myths and, and, and the killings that have been happening, I think you all know about the killings that are happening across Africa of people with albinism, mm. and you put, issues like poverty in the equation, because you find these myths are, these myths are often associated with uh, accumulation of wealth and things like that. If you cut the hair of a person with albinism, you're going to get rich. A body part of a person with albinism, uh, you can make a powerful charm that can make you uh, rich. So these are some of these myths are also associated with our current context of also poverty within the African context. So I think that's why also uh, some of these myths are much more pronounced and they continue to be perpetuated within the African context. But as far as in terms of uh, discrimination, uh, discrimination is, is, is across the globe. That's why we even have um, a, gr a global alliance on, on albinism because we realize that even uh, people with albinism across the globe, they are also facing things like stigma and discrimination. Mm, mm. Thank you. Wow, that's, that's, very, that's very profound you, to, to, to really get to know this. And then how is, gen how, how is the general acceptance of children with albinism in, in families, you know, in our families? Because I think it starts there, you know, how is my family receiving me? Or even the couple itself, you know, uh, the mother and the father. Um, in some cases, I understand that uh, um, couples separated just because a child was uh, uh, with albinism. How is the general acceptance? Uh, perhaps as others are still thinking, I, I could uh, come in and say the issues of acceptance is one of the topical debates that we have uh, actually mostly here in Africa. Uh, you would find out that it, it is because of limited awareness and appreciation to simply say uh, of what albinism is exactly, what will be the responsibility. I would give you some of the myths that we do have. You do hear that uh, somebody has been divorced because 
a husband is suspecting a wife of having an affair with a white man, or mm. others take it as an uh, as an om, or to simply say it's a case whereby the father or the mother would have been would have sinned. So mm. it it depends with uh, how people take it, and it varies from community to community as far as Africa is concerned. But mm. however. I think with the uh, with the years we are gradually seeing some of these uh, myths slowly but surely disappearing as a result of advocacy that has been done all over. It's difficult for one to appreciate that a person with disability can be a lawyer with albinism to be specific, can be a lawyer one day. It's also dif difficult for people to appreciate that a person with albinism can be a PhD or that can be a lecturer who could teach almost everyone. So all those are some of the strides that are working towards increasing appreciation and acceptance of persons with, uh, with albinism uh, in, in our African country. Uh, let me also highlight some of the causes that would actually increase uh, uh, limited appreciation leading to uh, breakaways in families and friends. It is important to mention that we live in society and it is the society that we live in that shapes the way we think and the way we believe. So mm. I think the backbone of all these things is the society. So once the society is confirmed, you would see that even if the father ran away, people can call the father or the mother and say, come, let's sit together. And they reason together, they convince him to the extent that he or she accepts the child and they mm. continue with the marriage. So what I would put the blame on is the community because persons with albinism are part of the community. They've yes. been part of the community. They will remain be part of the community, not only the community, but they will be part of humanity. And I'm mm. always, I always say is that, Albini the human race will never be complete unless we have the albinism component. So mm. let's normalize the situation than normalizing it. That's why you have heard me uh, always arguing against the scientific uh, definition of albinism, talking about genetic disorder. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much. Mr. Nyone, thank you so very much. And on that note, being the executive director of Albino Trust in Zimbabwe, what would you love to share with us, even as others are putting something together? What would you love to share with us? Looking at, you know... Okay. Mm. Yeah, okay. What is important is like, it's obviously, we simply say, as the albinism community always say, nothing, anything for us without us is not partially, but is totally against us. So this is to simply say there is need for us to create an equal uh, level playing field with persons with albinism. Persons with albinism, for us to appreciate the wonders they can do in order to transform our struggling economies in Africa, in order to unite our different societies which are fragmented. What only people with albinism require is the enabling environment, inclusive and sustainable laws and policies that are fully implemented, not something which is on paper. We need adequate support to be given in terms of education, in terms of employment, in terms of the learning and the working conditions. You would see that most of most of even the landlords, they don't want uh, persons with albinism who would come in as tenants in their houses. All those things, if we demystify them, we will improve the, the situation. And uh, with that, I'm convinced that if we do it together, we will go far. The always question that I ask is, if not by us, the question is who then? If not by, if not now, when then? When? It's not by us who then. So the time that we need to action is we need action right here and right now. Over to you. I think others would have something to add. Thank you so very much. Uh, my dear wonderful panel, um, after what uh, Mr. Bruce has said, who would love to come in? I think, Chikondi, are you coming in? Yes. Um, I just wanted to add on the thing of acceptance in, in the families. So usually uh, these days, it's um, the, the acceptance is a problem in mostly in rural areas in, in our countries, because that's where issues of stigma are so, um, you know, intense and discrimination is quite a lot. And the myths are so intense in, in these areas um, as compared to maybe the urban areas. So I feel like um, we also need to bring awareness in in the communities, in, in local communities, because that's where um, acceptance issues are so perverse. And it, it, it's a problem really, because maybe in, in the rural areas, that's where um, 
um, persons with albinism do not have role models to look up to, to see that maybe uh, persons with albinism can actually become doctors, nurses, or lawyers, mm. or any other thing that persons with albinism can, can achieve. But um, so we, we need to actually also look at the different communities, like Bruce said, that the acceptance issues are are different from community to community. But I just wanted to add that they are so perverse in rural areas. Mm. Thanks very much, much uh, Sister Chikondi. And being a patient, you know, yourself, uh, let's talk about the perceptions of beauty uh, in Malawi and Africa in general, you know, um, what what would you say? And maybe tell us a little bit about yourself, how you stood up and said, look, I'm going to contest here. And uh, because being a, a pageant also says you're an ambassador. So what would you love to share with us tonight? Um, the perception of, you know, beauty have changed, has changed over time. Mm. So like um, it, it has changed, I can say, in, in from society to society. But what mm. I can say is that usually uh, people do not think that people with albinism or people with diff uh, disabilities in general uh, have beauty that they can showcase. Because by virtue of being a person with disability, people think that uh, you're, you're less of a human. So... Mm. The perception, I can say, is that uh, people with disabilities are not considered as someone who has beauty. So um, doing the pageant that we did in Malawi, I feel like it also brought awareness to people that it also showed that people with albinism also do have the, the, the beauty. So when I decided to contest for uh, the Miss Albinism pageant, um, basically, I just also wanted to show the world that uh, persons with albinism also have beauty. So mm -hmm. that was one thing. That was one thing that drove me into um, doing the pageant, contesting in in the pageant, because the perception is it does not regard people with disabilities or albinism to be. Um, accepted in society or as people that um, are also beautiful. Wow. Um, I, I'm looking at you hosting a pageant. Uh, now it will not just be uh, Malawi, but uh, starting with a SADC pageant and then an African mm -hmm. pageant, because honestly, we really need to go to go big on this and make sure that we are dealing with the myths and we are educating our people when we talk advocacy and uh, 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 you know I, I would love to hear from you being um, a, a SADC deputy head of third technical committee what you know I, I, I'm tempted to let this wonderful panel tell us exactly what you are doing because my desire tonight is for all our listeners and all our viewers to be able to know exactly that uh, something is happening within the region and uh, we should be able to be part of it. What, what do you have to say to us tonight? Okay, thank you so much. Firstly, I want to emphasize that in SEDEC or in Africa, we are one, irrespective mm. of the skin color, the language and the tribe that you come mm. from. That's mm. the heart from which we do everything. Mm. And of course, in the SEDEC SIOF, which is a youth part of the SEDEC, mm. we have um, a disability cluster or a disability committee where we, we hear the concerns of persons with uh, disability across the SEDEC, not mm. just hearing the concerns, but mm. also giving them the platform to become everything that they are and to mm. elevate, amplify and strengthen their being. So mm. I just also want to narrow it down now to albinism. So um, last year, during the second SEDEC Youth Forum, which was hosted in Mozambique, we had declarations, which we normally present to the SADC member states, to the organizations, to the civil societies to say, this is the way forward with regards to a uh, disability communi community. So mm. from last year's uh, declarations, 
there was a concern about persons with albinism that needs to be given an urgent attention. And that concern birthed what we call SECA, which is um, SEDEC Youth Champions for Albinism Agenda. Okay. So the SEDEC Youth Champions for Albinism Agenda um, focuses mainly on the three objectives, which will be firstly, uh, the issue of mobilizing sunscreens. Okay. The main cure, the main problem with regards to albinism is really the sun, like Mr. Bruce highlighted in his mm. um, conversation that mm. they, they need protection and they can do certain things. Mm. And secondly, the issue of education, as there are high dropouts of persons with albinism mm. um, in, in schools, so to support their education, and of course, lastly, to enhance the issue of advocacy. So in a nutshell, that is bad. Wow, that's awesome. You know, Sister uh, uh, I, I adopted a school in our province. It's called uh, Riboni School for the Blind. It's one of the highly performing schools. And uh, we have a lot of children with albinism. Um, and uh, I, I remember one who went to do law, a very powerful young man you know, uh, in, in that group. And one of the things that truly we have seen over the years is that uh, this need for sunscreen, this need for clothes that at least covers their hands nicely, and uh, uh, also for heads that will really protect them from the sun. But these are things that uh, the general public is not aware of, and uh, it sometimes we get stuck in myths. But um, I, I would love, you know, I love what you're saying because a lot is happening. And like I said to Chikondi that uh, we really need to look at uh, Misadek, you know, uh, in albinism. Uh, and uh, we we here as Bold Moves Radio, um, you know, our, our slogan is boldly breaking barriers and limitations and raising the flag of hope for an African child. And that is why uh, it's it's about a platform where we can be able to talk about these issues, you know, uh, beginning to solve our our problems, write our stories, because a lot of people try and write our stories. And sometimes we get so offended that they misrepresented us, but we have to write our own stories. Sister Lebohila, I feel you still have a lot. Please share with us. We want to hear from uh, from your desk as deputy uh, uh, head in SADC of the Third Technical Committee. What else can you give us tonight? Because I realize that it's important that my audience tonight get to understand that this panel is loaded. And I'll be coming to Mr. Tafazwa also, who is a say-off reporter. But what else would you love to share with us tonight? I think moving, not I think, but moving forward as well as what we do is that we, we believe that the young people across the SADC region are the agents of change. We had um, in August, we had a third SADC Youth Forum, which was hosted in Malawi. Mm. And as the disability committee, we also came together um, to, to, you know, but basically the focus was on SECA the mm. SADC um, Youth Champions for Albinism Agenda, where mm. we had different discussions as well. And also, not, not only about, I want to emphasize that what we are doing is not about charity. It's about mm. sustainable development. It's yes. about empowering persons with disability or rather with albinism because yeah. they are well able as yeah. well. In the mm. workplace, in academia, every field, they are well able. So mm. from the, the conversations on or the discussion that we had during the third SADC um, Youth Forum disability uh, discussion, one of the key things that came as an outcome for that is that there is a necessity within the SADC region to create robust protection systems oh, yes. for people with albinism. Mm. As we strongly condemn this mm. issue of um, the murderings and the violations against persons with albinism. Mm. So that's one of the things that are very key. Uh, we, they need to feel safe. They need to feel safe in Africa, in the workplace, and so that they can fully enjoy their human rights, mm. um, just like everyone else. Wow. 
I Thank can you so go much. on and on if you don't stop me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I see that <laughs> as you continue, <laughs> you know, it, it really gets you. Uh, <laughs> I, I now not only hear your words, but I hear your heart. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bruce, uh, before I take uh, Mr. Tafazo, what what can you say after what Chikondi and uh, Cesare Labochile have just said? You know, I, I I just get into the shoes of Martin King, Martin uh, Luther King Jr., whereby I would say, look, this, we look forward to that day where we are not going to be judged by the color of our skin, but mm. the content of our character. Mm. As I question what really has entered into the leader, into our African leaders' heads, mm. to the extent that they prefer to offer condoms to mm. ensure that people are protected from HIV. Mm. As they do sex, which is not a, something that is natural, but a voluntary act, mm. and leave persons with albinism who had no choice but who found themselves in a certain situation, mm -hmm. actually dying because probably because albinism is not contagious. And mm -hmm. that's what I question to say, what really has entered into the heads of our, of our leadership? And mm -hmm. I equally question, what is it, what kind of a spirit that had entered into our fellow brothers and sisters who are Africans, to the mm -hmm. extent that they are now butchering their own friends, their own father, their only families, their only family members, their own young brothers and sisters, in mm. the name of wanting to be rich. Mm. In the past, we didn't know about this. Mm. So what is it that has entered our, our people? Where mm. are the headmen? Where mm. are the, 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 the chiefs? Where are the members of parliament? Where are the councillors? Where are the presidents when all these things happen? Mm. Where are the teachers? Where mm. are the pastors when Africa has become more of a being a religious continent? Mm. Where are we when all these things are happening? I feel mm. each and every one have got a role to play. True. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much, sir. Yo, where are we? Honestly, that's a, that's a very powerful question. Where are we? Because even, uh, you know, when you say, where are the pastors? Because, you know, pastors, we are in communities. We are where people are. What is it that we're saying behind our podiums? You know, when we talk of people with albinism, when we talk of people with disabilities, uh, because one other thing that uh, my uh, my involvement with people uh, 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 with disabilities was that, um, you know, uh, some of them, even when they go to church, maybe on crutches, the next thing the pastor says, come here, <laughs> and they want to pray for you, and they want to, to throw away your crutches, and uh, they think you've got a problem, you know, you are in a wheelchair, they think you've got a problem that they must solve, and when you you, you finally do not uh, uh, stand or do not walk, they blame you. They started it, but they blame you, which again needs also a transformation, a change of mind also to religious leaders, because if somebody with a disability comes to church, they have not come for what I think. They've come to worship. They've come to serve God. They've come to live. You know, they don't have a problem. Uh, you know, they, they, they are okay. They are able in their own corner. So really, this says, where are we, all of us? Mr. Tafazwa, you are the Sadek say of reporter. Could you please report something for us tonight? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much, say, for, for, for the time. Uh, currently, as the Mr. Lemokle have highlighted that, we are currently on, on an ongoing campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, Sadak Youth Champion for the Albinism Agenda, mm -hmm. which we are calling everyone and saying, no, come, let's come together and reason together so that we stop the killing, we stop the abductions. Mm -hmm. Then we show each other that, no, these are also human. These are like us. These are our brothers and sisters. It's just the color, but we are of the same. So we are still also saying, let's everyone come together. Let's raise awareness so that we... we we, we do not want to keep on hearing Mr. Bruce asking, where are we? We want to show him where we, where, where we are and where we are going so that at the end of the day, everyone has been educated that no, it's just a color, but there's nothing, he's just like you, he's just like me, so that mm. we, we walk the same path. So mm. we are still on, on, on this campaign and we are calling everyone, saying you 
leaders, church leaders, community leaders, our heads, our chiefs, school, school headmasters, school teachers, let's work together so that people with albinism are protected. People with albinism are respected. Yeah, in, in short, this is what I can, I can say for the meantime. Thank you so, so very much. In fact, this, this is very, very much important. You know, I, I always say, you know, um, that is why I was um, excited when I hear Cesare Lemochele saying young people should arise. Um, in one of the programs, you know, young, young girls and young boys were saying, hey, South Africa, for an example, we've had um, a huge uh, uh, borrow, you know, we borrowed a huge sum of money looking at dealing with uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And then there's been misappropriation of funds and all things like that. And they were saying, hey, who is going to pay that debt? And, and they said, our leaders, our fathers, they created debt that we must pay. And like somebody said, Africa, we're always lagging behind because our four or those who have gone before us, uh, you know, before they hand ever over the baton, they throw it down. And before you run your own part of the race, you have to run back to go and pick it up. And that is painful. And uh, as I say, you are very right. I believe young people should we are not the leaders of tomorrow. Young people are leaders today and we must shape the Africa that we want. And uh, it starts right here and it starts with uh, programs like this. And I see Mr. Bruce Nyoni, uh, he's fired up there and he's got something to say and I'll appreciate that. And we're still on the conversation that is the vibrant corner and with this wonderful panel. And uh, the, uh, it's about uh, 17 minutes to seven o'clock and time is just flying, but you are listening to Bold Moves Radio. The program is The Vibrant Corner. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. Streaming 24 seven. 24 seven. Bold Moves Bold Radio. Africa, na na sana. Oh, Africa, na na sana. That's where we are at. This is Bold Moves Radio, and the program is uh, The Vibrant Corner. And uh, Mr. Bruce Nyoni, uh, the platform is yours, sir. Yes, I would want to emphasize on young people. Mm. To simply say, young people, you are the future of Africa. You are the leaders of tomorrow. Mm. Yes, you are leaders. I would want to urge you that uh, your forefathers and your current fathers your leaders, to some extent, at times they become your misleaders, but at times they've remained as leaders. They have aided in so many places and so many areas. They have made successes in a lot of areas and in a number of areas. But what I pray for is that let's keep the momentum. Let's copy what is good and do away with what is if. There are some mm. of the issues that were being swept under the carpet. There mm. were some of the voices which were being suppressed. There were mm. other communities which were being oppressed. But mm. let's all be voice of the voiceless. Who will speak on behalf of the weak? Who will mm. assist the weary? Who will comfort those who are weeping? Let's mm. all be one and united so that we leave each other not behind, but we move as a team. That on its own will help us to achieve the Africa we want, the mm. Africa we all belong, and the Africa to which we belong. I feel that persons with albinism and those with disabilities should not be treated as, as last or third class citizens mm. in the continent of their own, but they mm. should equally be given an equal and befitting honor and uh, responsibility to be part and parcel of the society to which they belong, to give mm. each and everyone uh, the opportunity they deserve, to create an enabling environment which will leave no one behind. I think you and me, we've got a task, a task to liberate those who are still uh, uh, oppressed in, liberate, in the liberated continent. We still mm. have a long way to go, but we can only go together and we can also go far once and until we appreciate the weaknesses that are currently there and capitalize on the gaps that are there and move forward as a nation. Let's move away from the charity model of disability or albinism programming to move mm. to a developmental one so that mm. we would not discriminate our fellow friends mm. and comrades. 
so that would move together. They, this community have got a lot which can offer. It can offer all those wonders, and if only they are given an opportunity. So mm. if others have failed to give them the opportunity, in your spheres that you are doing, please start to, 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 to give them the, the opportunity to be equally represented. It's not too late, but you can do the change that we all want. I think we understand each other because we are young people. We know where mm. we are and we know where we want to go. Thank mm. you. Yo, Mr. Nyoni, thank you so very much. On that very note, you know, Pastor Spusi Somatlangu says, Mr. Nyoni and the rest of the team, we feel your heart and are condemned of for standing and just watching all this discrimination growing by day by day. This has been an eye opener and we will surely act differently. Thank you, Pastor Strike, for exposing us to such truths. Wow, that's that's awesome. It's exactly what you're saying, uh, Mr. Nyoni, and we really appreciate. Mr. Aldridge Manyoro, I was coming to you. You really felt my heart, brother, because you are a researcher. You have got a lot to share with us in these few minutes that are left. We would love to hear uh, before we chat the way forward. The platform is yours, Mr. Aldridge. Okay, thank you. Uh, I was sorry I had I missed a lot of issues that I wanted to comment on because of my network. As you can see, it was going mm. on and off. Uh, mm. But yeah, I wanted to touch on some of the issues that uh, were being discussed here, especially mm. the issue of um, dehumanization and mm. uh, the perception that uh, something is wrong with the person without the I think uh, it all ties to that. Uh, in in all the uh, my work with people with albinism, I've noticed this that uh, dehumanizing people with albinism, especially if you look at uh, things like access to resources, access to to, to 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 economic benefits, it's easy for your governments, for your communities to deprive people of albinism of these resources if they if they make people believe that people with autism are less than human. Mm. So the, the dehumanization process to make people with autism look less human is actually also a ploy um, that then results in you know, uh, them being deprived of resources. No one is going to complain or to stand up for people with autism because everyone sees them as being less human. So it's actually you know, uh, a, a, a big ploy uh, that is that is that is going on, uh, and I also wanted to comment on the issue of the media. I mm. was happy to hear my brother Tafadzwa Deb he was talking mm. about the call to raise awareness and encouraging uh, reporters and to come in and report these issues. I I think there is a lot of underreporting when it comes mm. to issues of albinism, and mm. it's it, 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 it's painful because you know you see a lot of issues that are mostly, you know, that are not really issues that would change society. Mm. People would like mm. to report more about celebrities mm. uh, going, buying cars and, and, and things like that. But it, when it mm. comes to critical issues like this, there is very little under-reporting. I mean, last mm. week I was looking at uh, this trend. There is this uh, soup model, a famous model, I think is based in South Africa and originated from Zimbabwe. He, he went online in his Instagram page and he has a huge following and uh, made some comments that are derogatory towards people with autism. Mm. So I was following this story and this is someone who is a social influencer. I mean, mm. and you start to wonder why these myths continue to perpetuate because mm. of such people, if, if they are posting such things on mm. their Instagram pages, it's, 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 it's quite difficult. So I'm, I'm going through the, the media report. And I see that there is very few reporting on such issues. You, mm. you, you can pick out one or two newspapers that would have reported such an issue. Mm. Then I start digging deep into this model, this figure. And I see there is a lot of reporting about how many cars he bought, she bought, how many, when the first party she attended, these, these are a lot. So you mm. can see the, 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 the unbalance in terms of the way in which reporting uh, is, is structured. No one really cares about reporting of such issues when it comes to stigma and discrimination. They would rather the report about parties and you know socialite events. So it's it's really a huge problem. And 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 this is how this problem of stigma is continuously perpetuated because mm -hmm. you know the, the society seems to 
not care and or, or the people that are actually supposed to be doing something. So I think, yeah, I think we still have a long way to go. Well, that, that, that's, that's very true. In fact, it's so scary that uh, things that are even destructive, not um, uh, constructive, they get such mileage, you know. In fact, they even say it makes news. You come with good news, they say good news does not sell. And here we're talking about lives here. Here we're talking about a community here. But um, there's not really much reporting. But um, uh, uh, Mr. Aldridge, that is why maybe this platform becomes very much important. And this brings me now to, uh, in this uh, seven or eight minutes that we have, it brings me now to uh, the question, what do we do? Where do we start? And as Bold Moves Radio, we are saying, here we are. We want to be part of this uh, car that is moving from Cape to Cairo and making sure that uh, we do what is good and right. But uh, as these different organizations, starting from uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Bruce uh, Nyoni, uh, our sister Rilebohile, uh, and uh, our sister Chikondi, and uh, our brother Tafadzwa and you, our brother Aldridge, give us the way forward. What can we expect? Because honestly, we would love to have these platforms. Today, all we needed to do was to say, look, Africa is not quiet. People with albinism are not quiet. They are a community, that, they are a people. They are competent. I have got friends that are powerful, that are great who are also coming to, who are also going to be part of this platform. Some are pastors. There is one that uh, we were just joking two, three days ago. It was his birthday. He said, my friend, I'm left with only one year to 10, 60, you know. But uh, what do we do? Where do we start? Uh, we, 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 here is a platform. How do we utilize it? How do we make noise? How do we make sure that whatever is happening in Zimbabwe, whatever is happening at Malawi, happening in, 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 in South Africa, in Botswana, in um, Mozambique, uh, Lesotho, Swaziland, all these uh, Southern countries, we are able to put it on air. We're able to talk about it. And uh, on that note, Mr. Nyoni, uh, Mr. Bruce, you, you were talking about something that is going on in Zimbabwe uh, now or in in few days to come about uh, 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 people with uh, disabilities. Um, okay, let me chip in, uh, uh, Mr. Moderator. Uh, it is important to note that um, the the Sadak uh, Youth Forum, the Disability Committee, for the first time, will be coordinating. Mm. Mm. It will be coordinating this uh, this project to ensure that we meet all the persons with albinism at their dearest point of need within the Sadek region, and if possible, we'll spill out to the rest of the African continent as we are mm. going to set the tone and show them how things are actually going to be done. Uh, mm. We are not going to take over the existing spaces, but what mm. we are going to do, probably a Sadek Youth Forum, the Disability Committee, is we are going to network to engage, to collaborate, and ensure that we mainstream albinism in all the facets of life. You will see that when it comes to the issues of financial illicit in Africa, persons with albinism are the ones who suffered the brunt. And when it comes to social injustices, they are the ones who bear the brunt. When it comes to the issues of climate change, they are the endangered species, if not the vulnerable population. So you'll see that we want to leave a stone unturned. But what we, what we, what, what we, are, what we are going to say is, let me be very clear to Africa that alone we cannot do it, but with you, we can. Together we can, we will, and we shall. Uh, mm. That is it. I'm sure we are guaranteed of your support. And thank you so much for the Board Moves Radio uh, and everyone involved to ensure that you give us this platform. Because with the media, most of most of the times, if somebody is beaten by a dog, it's not news. But if somebody buys a dog, you'll find <laughs> yourself in the book today. Let, let's just walk that albinism programming a just beaten a dog and then <laughs> let everyone hear what, what 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 we are talking about i think together we will and we will actually uh go far 
to the persons with albinism are probably that would be my last statement to them it's like don't feel as if you are alone to those of you who have been attacked don't feel that everyone has offended you yes mm -hmm. we appreciate and uh, know and acknowledge the existence of rebels and criminals who mm -hmm. are hunting or what departed with your animals but mm -hmm. they are the rest of sadak the rest of our god is also by your side let's mm -hmm. just pray one day things will change let's rewrite the story of africa and mm -hmm. once we rewrite it everything will fall into place thank you so much thank you so so much mr yoni and uh, we are about four minutes to uh, seven o'clock please uh where do we go from here i i think mr bruce has given some serious punches here which are very much important and we are here we are saying we are together and we press this we move this forward please yeah um i would first would like to would like to say the most precious resource available on earth or in Africa is a human being. Yes. So if you want economic growth, um, social, economic, political abundance, take care of that resource, a human being. Mm. And again, I want to say that prevention is better than cure. If sure. we contribute towards ensuring that every young person has access to sunscreens, it means we're already preventing skin cancer. And mm. to deal with skin cancer is another beast that is mm. beyond contributing whatever amount you have to say, I'll be a difference uh, maker and contribute towards sunscreens. And mm. lastly, I want to say that as Sedex Sayo, we are a coordinating body, we are a regional coordinating body. It mm. means we have access to every organization in the, mm. in the SADC region, organizations of persons with disability, organizations of psychosocial health, organizations of stigma. It's time to wake up. It's mm. time to wake up from the sleep. Let's mm. come together and stand united and ensure that this most precious resource, people living with albinism, also they are their optimum best. Thank mm. you. Thank you so very much, Sister Lebohile. Sister Chikondi, please. Um, could you, uh, from our Miss, uh, Miss Albanese in Malawi, um, please, wh where do we go from here? What, what do we say? Where, where do we start? Like uh, you have had Mr. Bruce over there in Cesare Um We are in your hands. All right, um, a lot has already been said by Mr. Bruce and Mr. Yoni. But mm. I just wanted to add that, um, the advocacy is not only for people with albinism only, but we all need to join hands and um, ensure that the rights of persons with albinism are protected and mm. that they live just like any other person. So mm. it's not just about persons with albinism fighting for themselves, but uh, everyone else has the duty to join in in the advocacy. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, so very much. Really appreciate it. Mr. Tafazwa, please, sir. Oh, thank you. It seems like I'm getting the mic when everyone has said everything I want to say. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, 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 anyway, I want to say to the youth, let's not imagine the Africa we want. Let's just create it. We yes. can create it by working together. And mm -hmm. I would like to call all media houses that let's come together and raise awareness together so that we end these killings, we end these abductions, we raise awareness so that everyone gets to know that no, albinism is just a disability. They are, they are not cursed or they do not have care, they do not carry money in their bones, but they are just like us. So as youth, I guess, or um, I, I say, I guess, or as youth, we are the people to change the narrative. We are the people to change the history, to rewrite what has been wronged or what has been left by mm. our forefathers. So the time is now for us to rise and make the change we want to see. With this, I say thank you so much. Thank you so very much, sir. And then last but not least, Mr. Aldridge, our researcher. <laughs> uh, unmute your mic, Mr. Aldrich. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, Thank yeah. you. 
<laughs> so I want to uh, talk about the way forward uh, by talking about uh, the project that we are currently watching here in South Africa uh, mm. with regards to access to health for people with autism. So, you know, I believe that, you know, awareness campaigns, they've been happening, but we need to now develop strategies, st new strategies that can enable uh, people with albinism, they can enable the community to actually understand what is albinism. What we are doing with our project, we are, ut we are utilizing what we call a decolonial feminist approach, where we are saying that we are involving community leaders, we are involving, you know, even those uh, traditional healers who we are trying to integrate them, to teach them about albinism. So awareness mm. does not only become about raising awareness for people with albinism. Because we mm. realize that some of the problems that we face within society is that we adopt some a westernized approach where uh, people, we come in and we say, no, your culture is barbaric, mm. this is wrong. So once mm. you start doing that to a culture and you go on and say, no, uh, albinism is, 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 is the definition is genetic. People no longer want to listen to you because already mm. you have dehumanized their culture. Mm. So we are trying to integrate, you know, all these groups, get them in, in into the to the table, raise awareness, and within the context of the African cultural uh, tradition, so that you know they don't feel left behind. And I mm. think that's um, uh, that's what our project is all about. And mm. um, yeah, I think basically. Uh, you can also follow the project on our Twitter and Instagram, Century23. Mm. Uh, but yeah, basically that is what we are trying to do in order to raise awareness. Thank you so very much, sir. And uh, last but not least, I see uh, our technical producer here, uh, Mr. Desmond. Mr. Desmond, I would love to release my panel. They've given their last shots for tonight um, um, uh, uh, in Tsonga. In <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, Pastor Strike, for affording me this opportunity. I'd like to appreciate the panel for, you know, the show has been very informative, and I think we have learned a lot from what they have uh, contributed. I, I, I wanted to ask a quick question uh, before we close, and particularly to uh, Chikondi, uh, because I've been to Malawi a couple of times. I wanted to find out, how rife is uh, the stigma around people living with albinism in Malawi? Um, can you repeat your question? Sorry. Okay. Yes, I, 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 Chikundi, I, 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 I've been to Malawi a couple of times. I've been to Blantyre, Lilongwe, but I wanted to find out from you how rife is the stigma around people living with albinism? Uh, well, uh, there's stigma all over, uh, but mostly, like I said earlier, it's um, most of the stigma is usually in the local areas, but it's not only there, but that's where it's so perverse. Mm. But um, there's the, the stigma, I can say, because in, in all aspects of life, persons with albinism are being stigmatized and discriminated. Like, Against. So I can say yes. Thank you so, so very much. And I'd love to give to uh, my host for the vibrant corner, that's Mr. TC uh, Mabunda. Mr. TC, before we release our panel, it's now about five minutes past uh, seven. I've gone five minutes beyond the time, but uh, um, we, you are the, you, you are the, 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 the the, <laughs> the 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 man of the house so we will not leave without uh, getting some matching orders from yourself before i say a few words and release my panel <laughs> no thanks very much um pastor strike uh, i really appreciate the time look this has been extremely informative and i would like to uh, thank the team uh, starting from uh, comrade bruce you know thank you very much uh, when we're together in South Africa, you didn't like say much, you know, about this. But today, I can tell you that I'm very much pregnant about like lots of information that you have imparted on us. So, Sir Lewile, like thank you very much, Sir Lewile. My name is so, you know, as your name uh, says it. You know, we 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 looking forward to this. You know, it's all about collaboration. It's all about networking. It's all about sustainable development. And we'll always uh, give you an ear, you know, to listen to you. 
Kafadwa, Mkoma, like, thank you very much, you know, and we hope that we we'll, like, hear uh, more, you know, about uh, these issues, you know, especially issues about, you know, people living with disability or albinism, you know, if I have to put it like that. And also Chikondi, you know, just fly, fly the flag high, you know, in Malawi, you know, like this is like very, very rife. And we, we, we're saying again, you know, our platform is here. Whatever that like you were trying to do in your country, please let us link up. And last but not least, I would just like want to touch on uh, um, Aldrich, you know, Mr. Munyor. We're hoping that like, we'll be the first one to read about like your findings and so forth. I think like, to, like one day, as we have said, it's not enough. We still need to engage on these issues. There are lots of myth, you know, around, you know, uh, uh, people living with albinism and we still need to engage on this. Let's have programs, you know, let's continue engaging. Let's continue enlightening people, you know, when it comes to uh, uh, this type of, sorry, this type of uh, disability. We appreciate you and thank you very much for giving us like your time. We know there will, there will be like lots of things that we will be doing like at this current moment. Um, we're hoping that like very, very soon we'll engage in uh, about like another program. And thank you, Mr. Host, you know, for standing in and doing like an excellent job. And I see like there are like some of your um, like side of members in our midst, even though you didn't get like much, you know, to comment on, but like, thank you very much. We really appreciate you. So I'll just like pack it here for now. And then to us, it's just like, let's continue with the networking and collaboration. Africa is the Africa that like we want and it's Africa that like we make. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Mr. Mabunda. And let me correct you. I said they must brutally correct us here. It's not people with uh, living with albinism. It's people with albinism, people with disabilities. Thank you so very much. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm smart from tonight. I'm smarter. And I'd love to take this time and say thank you so very much. You are listening to Bold Moves Radio, boldly breaking barriers and limitations, raising the flag of hope for an African child. And to our panel, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we're saying as Bold Moves Radio and the Vibrant Corner, this is your platform. Whatever you're doing, wherever you're doing it, we would love to be part of it. We don't want just to contribute, we want to be part of it. Even some of the meetings, you know, we would love to be part of it and even come there live so that uh, together we move Africa forward. And of course, Africa is a great continent. Africa, we are a great people from you know you look back we are a people who are able to embrace each other we have projects uh, our indigenous projects like lichima tima where there is not there was never said to be a poor person in a community if we have cattle we'll plow our own yard and plow the neighbor's yard if 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 it's about roofing our our hearts we will do it for each other and this is the africa that we are talking about and united we move Africa forward. I just want to say thank you so very much to my panelists. And I, I also want to say, we will be putting our ear on the ground to hear what is the next move. And we want to be part of that. We want to make noise about it. And we would love also to say to our friends on Facebook, thank you so very much for being part of this conversation on the Vibrant Corner tonight. I trust that you are enriched. And all our friends also on YouTube, thank you so very much. Let us move Africa forward. Let us really open up and deal with these very crucial uh, uh, issues where we, we have to deal with different myths around our communities, around our people. And of course, our friends and all of you on Bold Moves Radio, thank you so very much. My name is Strike and uh, I've been your host tonight. I love you all and I appreciate you. A blessed night to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.